We don't do that many stories here about black child abuse, mostly because lots of people don't like watching them, and I don't like making them. But there are tons and tons of stories out there. Whether it's in the home, whether it's a boyfriend, whether it's in a daycare center, tons and tons, we could do a story every day, at least. But finally the other night, I was listening to NPR on the way home from one of my buddy's house, and um, there was an hour-long discussion on a NPR show called Radio Labs, Radio Times, and the whole show was basically about black child abuse. A woman wrote a book saying, hey, parents, stop whooping your black children. And so I learned three things from this show that I, I kind of knew, but I wasn't, didn't really have it nailed down. One, child abuse is at epidemic levels in black homes. Two, the author of this book figured out the reason why. It's all because of white racism. And three, we got kind of a backdoor view of what happens in, white, in black families. They're teaching their children that they have to be spanked because the white man is going, is out to get them. And if they don't get, I know it's kind of follow, it's kind of tortured logic, but you'll hear it in a minute. White people are out to get you. And if I don't teach you how to behave here, the white people will get you and put you in jail or their police will kill you. So let's get this going with just the latest case of some black child abuse in a daycare center. Then let's listen to a couple minutes of this interview and just see, see if we can make sense out of some of this insanity. This is the mugshot of Janae Hamilton, the daycare worker who allegedly body slammed a 16-month-old girl at Oxford Babies, Inc. The owners told me they hired the 20-year-old a few months ago and fired her immediately after learning of the alleged attack. A high-ranking law enforcement source told me investigators are now looking at a possible second attack that happened on the same day, November 28th. Smyrna police confirmed the investigation is far from over. Police say the 16-month-old girl would not go down for a nap. Investigators tell me they're not ready to release surveillance video of the alleged attack, but did say the child was bleeding from the mouth. Have you seen the video? I have. How disturbing was it? It shocks the conscience. It is very disturbing. According to an arrest warrant I obtained, in addition to the body slam, Hamilton grabbed the back of the child's head and, with force, pushed the child's face into a mat. I'm Marty Moss Cohen. Welcome to Radio Times. The American Academy of Pediatrics has a simple answer to the question about whether it's okay to spank your child. No. They recently announced a new policy calling for a ban on spanking, saying that long-term research reveals that corporal punishment is not an effective form of discipline, and even more troubling, it increases the risk for aggression, anxiety, and depression in children, and later as adults. Also with us, Stacey Patton, joining us from the studios of WEAA at Morgan State University, wrote a book called Spare the Kids, Why Whooping Children Won't Save Black America. She's an assistant professor of multimedia journalism at Morgan State University, which is in Baltimore, and she has written about the abuse that she endured as a child at the hands of her adoptive mother. And Stacey Patton, nice to have you with us on Radio Times as well. Good morning. Nice to be here. Nice. I don't want to get caught up in semantics, but they define spanking as, quote, non-injurious, open-handed hitting with the intention of modifying child behavior. Um, Stacy, your book is about whooping. I was thinking about hitting and beating. Uh, I think it's important that we define what it is that we're talking about. When you talk about whooping, Stacy, what do you mean? It's once again, it's semantics. Um, so in African American culture, when you talk to parents some, or people who were hit as children, and you say, "Were you spanked as a child?" Uh, and some people will actually laugh at the word. They'll say, "No, I got whooped." And for them, it could be uh, describing the types of objects that may have been used: a belt, switch, a hand, the severity of uh, being hit. Uh, but in my book i don't parse out degrees right. of violence um i don't play semantics spank whoop pop beat it's all it all involves pain and hitting and it all sets children up for the same types of negative karma stacy your book is really about black families help us understand about spanking or hitting in black families how common do you think that is I think it's very common. I, I would say the vast majority of black parents hit their kids. And this is based on 
uh, the types of conversations I hear in churches, uh, social spaces, uh, social media especially. Um, we have black uh, parents who are doing things like picking up video cameras and recording themselves uh, uh, physically punishing their kids, sometimes beating them with objects like extension cords and, and belts, and then uploading them on popular social media sites like World Star, Hip Hop, Facebook. Sometimes they're live streaming the beatings, and then these things get shared uh, millions of times, and they garner tons of comments. And people see this as, you know, responsible black parenting. They'll say, this is, this, we need more moms and dads to deal with these kids. Um, in this way, or we wouldn't have so many problems in our, our communities. Stacy, let me go back to you. And you wrote something in the New York Times. I actually saved it March 10th, 2017. It was titled Stop Beating Black Children, where you describe the kind of abuse. I don't think there's any other word we can use for this. The abuse that you had to endure at the hands of your, as you describe, my black middle class adoptive mother. And you describe in vivid detail what she would do to you for doing things that kids do, you know, rolling your eyes, telling lies, as you say, any number of other childhood misbehaviors. Uh, can you talk a little bit about what happened to you and do you understand why? Um, I definitely understand why. And I think that as I, I wrote in both of my books and uh, on this issue that it's rooted in the history of racism. Um, a lot of African Americans think that beating children is a black thing. You'll actually hear them say it, and I'll say that's absolutely not true. This is something that spans across race, class, culture, region, religion, et cetera, in this, this country. But there's a different kind of historical specificity to the problem when we talk about it in African-American culture. Um, in my second book, I looked at pre-colonial West African uh, cultures prior to contact with, um, with whites, prior to the slave trade, and the Middle Passage experience. And I found absolutely no evidence that this type of ritualistic um, punishment practice mm -hmm. existed in those cultures or among indigenous people here uh, in North America. And so it was, uh, hitting children became a, a byproduct of colonialism, of the enslavement process, the brutality of slavery, and our indoctrination into Western Christianity. You know, that whole concept of spare the rod and so on. And so my um, uh, adoptive parents um, had roots in the South. Their parents, my adoptive father was a sharecropper in Mississippi. Uh, so they lived in a very violent you know, uh, setting where black communities were under siege. And so beginning on the plantation, many enslaved parents believed that, look, a beating from me is better than from the overseer or the master. Mm -hmm. And then after slavery, it became dangerous to be a black child. Now you could kill black children um, uh, in lynchings and raids on homes and such. So they felt they needed to reinforce racial etiquette and proper boundaries and messages about place by reinforcing it sometimes with a, a whooping because that whooping they believed would save their life. And then flash forward to when I'm a kid growing up in the 80s and 90s, my adoptive mother had the same fears. We were experiencing in this country the war on drugs, the beginning of the rise of mass incarceration. There was still police brutality. Uh, and so black parents, you know, uh, parented with this fear that I need to keep you alive. I need to make sure you survive adulthood. Um, and so uh, if I do this, it's better than you, you ending up in, in jail or, you know, in a box. And so they parented in that way. And Yes, uh, and I often hear, if you go on social media under any post about spanking, any policy, any new science, you'll hear uh, black folks especially say, well, it's better that we do this to our own kids or uh, they, our kids will end up in prison or on the streets or police officers will kill them. And so I usually chime in and I say, well, let's look at the data. So how many unarmed black children have been killed by police officers? And usually they can name Tamir Rice or Mike Brown and, and a few other cases that have captured headlines. But then I say, okay, now let's look at the annual child maltreatment reports that are published each year. And I've looked at the raw numbers over the past 10 years. And um, black children die at a, that's about a, about 300, an average of 360 black children are killed every single year at the hands of their parents and caretaker as a re caretakers as a result of maltreatment. About 40% of those are due to, to being hit, uh, you know, hitting that escalated. And so I make the point that black children are more at risk of being 
assaulted, seriously injured, or killed by their own parents and caretakers than a cop. And so, um, and also, if keeping black people out of prisons or be, from being brutalized by cops or killed by cops, if, if that parenting tactic was so effective, then why are we having national conversations about police brutality and mass incarceration in America? Uh, came to live with her when I was five years old. And so there was a two-year waiting period uh, that we had to go through before the adoption was finalized. And right away, uh, she started hitting me, even on visits uh, when the social worker would pick me up and take me back to my foster home. And so, you know, I was five years old the first time I ever got hit. She backhanded me in my mouth for pouting. Mm -hmm. And in my entire world came crashing down because no one had ever put their hands on me. So here was this person that was supposed to love and nurture me and keep me safe. Um, making me feel unsafe for the first time in my life. And so then there was all the messaging that went along with it. I hit you because I love you. Um, I hit you because I want to keep you safe. I hit you because I don't want the white man to kill you. So I grew up in a neighborhood, went to a school where this whole spanking thing was not uncommon. But to me, we didn't, you know, but when you're kids, you don't really know what's going on behind closed doors until later, if at all. But now I know. And I've talked to my friends about this. It's almost like a direct thing. Please, sir. I want some more. The kids who, where there was lots of alcohol in the house, they were the ones who were spanked the most. They were the ones who were the roughest, toughest, biggest, baddest, most delinquent kids. And they're the ones who are still trying to work through it today. So I don't even know what that means in light of all this, but there's a lot of weird stuff going on behind closed doors and white families, black families, whatever kind of families. But at least we know one reason why the black kids are angry.